So here we come. A story of urgency, agency, and proof that, in fact, it can be done. And that's the story of planetary boundaries. I would assume that most of you have heard this concept already. And recently, through the efforts of the Coalition of the Willing, I became more aware that not everybody knows what this concept really means. And briefly, the Coalition of the Willing is an effort that we're doing as agile practitioners, a group of freelancers, to enable others and upskill to those skills on demand for what we ought to achieve by 2030. So enabling agile people, that's coaches, scrum masters, product people, developers, to skill up and account in every day in their work life for both natural and social capital. So that's the coalition of the willing. And so talking with so many people, going through the process, it became more apparent that this concept of planetary boundaries may not be very clear. So my aim here is in relatively short amount of time, debunk and explain what it is. So here it comes. Now, in essence, the nine planetary boundaries were proposed back in 2009 by a group of scientists. And just last year, for the first time, we have a whole assessment of all nine boundaries that was published back end of last year, September, I believe. That's 2023. Think about the boundaries as a framework, a framework for helping us to measure and comprehend the set of processes that regulates the resilience and stability of our home. And when I say our home, is the system that we operate in the planet Earth. Now, as you may know, I am a big fan of this one to help us to express and to interpret concepts. And the planetary boundaries are represented as slices within and beyond the sphere that you can recognize quite easily that sphere is the globe. So anything within that globe is a safe operating space. And beyond that, they are the risk to the people and the very ecosystems that sustain our life on Earth. And those are at detriment when you pass on that safe operating space. And I kind of covered some of this back in 2021 with the book of Sustainable Happy Profit. Now, just to break them down, the nine boundaries are climate change, which you probably thought about. Uh, that's the one that we talk um, most about. This climate change boundary has two sections. One is radiative forcing and the other one is CO2 concentration. You will hear most often CO2. But our problems and the systems that define our life on Earth go beyond this and so having a clarity across the nine different boundaries it gives us a much more holistic approach so all the boundaries are biosphere integrity and that's genetic integrity and also functional the land system change so things that we have already um, disturbed and change taken over more than 75 percent of land that is not covered by us and when i say we we as one species humans then there is the boundary of fresh water change, which is blue and green woods. I think of blue woods as usable. Then bio geochemical flows, and mainly accounted by two different compounds, which is phosphorus and nitrogen. Ocean acidification, which you most likely have heard as well. And atmosphere aerosol loading, stratospheric ozone depletion, and then novel entities, which are a bunch of different things that we humans have created. So that's synthetic chemical substances, radioactive materials, and so on. The crude and ugly truth is that six of the nine are crossed. And we are beyond that safe operating zone, which in turn sort of puts pressure and stresses on themselves because things are interrelated and we have a very highly complex in this circle that we call life. Now humans, again, one species, are putting an incredible amount of pressures and excesses on these very systems in the way of how we operate since mainly industrial but also agriculture revolution doing so in such a big number. Now let's not go into despair. The goal the goal of the game, where we need to put our mind and efforts and finances and time, is to 
maintain earth systems stability and life support systems that are conducive to welfare for humans and more. And for that, to, to get to the point where we can maintain that, uh, stability of the earth systems, then we need to regenerate many of these boundaries which we have already surpassed and are critically affected by our anthropocentric activities. Now, I want to point out a success story, a success story that when we put our mind, our efforts into it, we can indeed make big changes in short timescales and in big numbers. And I'm sure you'll remember the ozone layer, the whole of the ozone layer, especially across the years within the change of the myelinia, then according to the latest report on the planetary boundaries, the stratospheric ozone depletion has decreased and now is within the safe operating space. And it continues to be on track to recover uh, within four decades. So this is good. And this is a remarkable proof that it can be done. So in a nutshell, this is it. The planetary boundaries. I hope that has clarified the concept. And to its core is how can we apply everything that we do to account for that social and natural capital so that we can protect our ecosystems, regenerate our biosphere, the, the way that we are polluting today, how can we reduce it? And there are many things that one can do at your job today in your company, in your team. And I guess the question is, are you willing to be part of the solution? <laughs>